This video is reviewing the musculature of the forearm, wrist, elbow, and hand. Starting at the proximal aspect, we can see the deltoid on the anterior side coming down from the shoulder. Also from the anterior side, we can see the tricep on the posterior side, both on the medial and the lateral aspect. We can see the long head of the bicep, which is on the lateral side and runs through the bicipital groove, as well as the short head that's on the medial side and attaches to the coracoid process. Deep to the bicep, we have our brachialis. And distal to that in the forearm, we have our brachioradialis. is the most superficial muscle on the radial side as well as our flexor mass. Our flexor mass attaches to the medial epicondyle of the humerus and runs down into the forearm. The muscles of this mass include the pronator teres, which is one of our primary pronators. We have our flexor carpi radialis. On the radial side, our palmaris longus in the middle, and our flexor carpi ulnaris on the ulnar side. All three of those flexor muscles cause flexion of the wrist. Looking at the flexor muscles one more time, we see our bicep again at the top. Remembering that the long head is lateral and the short head is medial. And the long head is the head that runs through the bicipital groove. Deep to that, we can see our brachialis, which is another elbow flexor, our brachioradialis on the radial side, and then our flexor mass. We also note this section of aponeurosis that runs from the end of the bicep tendon towards the ulnar side. And we call this our bicipital aponeurosis. And it's an extension of the bicep tendon. Looking again at the wrist flexors, we see our three primary muscles of flexion. We have our flexor carpi radialis on the radial side just below our pronator teres. Palmaris longus is in the middle. And then our flexor carpi ulnaris on the ulnar side. Now to keep track of those, we can also follow them down to their insertion. So if we follow our flexor carpi radialis down to the insertion, it inserts on the carpals on the radial side. Our flexor um, carpi ulnaris comes down and attaches to the um, proximal end of the ulna. And then we can follow our palmaris longus down the middle and it attaches to our carpals right in the middle of the wrist. So going from the thumb side lateral to medial, we have flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor carpi ulnaris. Coming down into the muscles of the hand, on the ulnar side, we have our palmaris brevis, which assists in opposition. On the outside of the fifth finger, we have our abductor digiti minimi, as well as our opponents digiti minimi, which is deep to that. On the thumb side, we have our abductor pollicis, then we have our flexor pollicis brevis, and deep to that muscle we would be able to see our flexor pollicis longus, and then these two muscles create our abductor pollicis. In between each of the fingers, we can see our lumbrical muscles, 
I'm going to label them as first, second, third, and fourth. Our first would exist between our thumb and our first finger, the second between our second and third finger, third between third and fourth finger, <clears throat> and fourth between fourth and fifth finger. Again, we call those the lumbrical or lumbricals muscles. Deep to this musculature, we can see our flexor digitorum superficialis. And we can follow its tendons down into the fingers. Distal to that, we have our flexor pollicis longus. And its tendon comes down and runs underneath our flexor pollicis brevis. We can also see our um, pronator quadratus at the distal radial ulnar joint that works with our pronator teres at the proximal radial ulnar joint. Deep to these muscles, we find our flexor digitorum profundus, which we can again track down to each of the four fingers through the tendons. We also see our flexor pollicis longus again. Remember that would be deep to our flexor pollicis brevis when we get down into the hand. Up at the top, we can also see our supinator, which again is our prime muscle of supination. Then we can see the first, second, third, and fourth lumbricals in the hand. Moving to the posterior side, we can tell that we're on the posterior side because we can find the olecranon process. Superior to the to the olecranon process, we have our tricep, which is a bipinnate muscle. So we see our tricep tendon coming down through the middle, and then we have fibers running to both the medial and the lateral side. In the tricep, we name um, our heads a little bit different than in the bicep. So we have our long head on the medial side, and then we have our lateral head on the lateral side. We can also see our posterior deltoid, um, as well as being able to see the bicep and the brachialis from the anterior side. From the posterior side of the arm, we can also see our flexor carpi ulnaris. This is a large muscle that attaches to that medial epicondyle on the humerus, and then comes down and attaches to the medial side of the ulna at the wrist. Again, even though we're on the posterior side with the extensors, we can still see that flexor carpi ulnaris. Moving laterally, we can see our extensor carpi ulnaris followed by our extensor digitorum followed by our extensor carpi radialis longus which is the most superficial, mu superficial muscle um, on the radial side right here. Looking at these muscles one more time, again remember we have that flexor carpi ulnaris, even though we're on the posterior side. Moving out from that, we have our extensor carpi ulnaris, our extensor digitorum, Which again, we can follow down, follow its tendons, going to each of the fingers. And then the most superficial muscle on that radial side, we have our extensor carpi radialis longus.
the small muscle that we can see on the posterior side, um, just lateral to the olecranon, is called the anconius, which contributes to the very end range of extension. Here we can see our tricep tendon. And then deep to that, we can see our brachialis. Moving into the hand, we can see those first, second, third, and fourth lumbrical muscles, as well as our abductor, digini minimi. our adductor pollicis. This is our oblique head. We can also catch a small glimpse of our abductor pollicis brevis. Our abductor pollicis longus, we can see the tendon coming down uh, from the forearm. Deep to these muscles on the posterior side, we have the extensor indices. The extensor pollicis longus. And the abductor pollicis longus. On the radial side, we have our extensor carpi radialis longus, which comes down and attaches to the second metacarpal head. Then we also have our extensor carpi radialis brevis, which comes down and attaches to the third metacarpal head. Deep to those two muscles, we can see our supinator. And then we have that adductor pollicis longus, just to the medial side. Here we can also see our flexor digitorum profundus. As well as our flexor digitorum superficialis. Now our flexor carpi radialis. The final layer of muscles that we can see is our extensor pollicis brevis. On the anterior side, we can see our pronator quadratus. At the top, we can see our supinator muscle.